You have entered the Command Zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Burn baby burn 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 baby burn 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 we should probably stop doing it. <laughs> we're getting worse. We're just getting worse. Yeah, we're just caring less as we go on. I was like, yeah, burn, baby, uh, burn the song down. All right, what's up, everybody? You're watching slash listening to the Command Zone podcast. I'm your host, Jimmy Wong. How is it? It's Josh Lee Kwai. Well, burn, baby, burn. We're doing the Obosh, the Prey Piercer uh, deck tech today. Burn Obosh. Yes. Burn Obosh, burn. Uh, you may remember in the set review we did for Akoria, we talked about how uh, we thought Obosh would be a good burn deck. Mm -hmm. Now, this isn't traditional burn like you would in like Modern or Legacy or something where there's a lot of sorceries just pointed at players' faces. Right. But it's the idea of, you know, most of the cards in the deck do a lot of damage to everyone, yourself included sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the goal of creating a, a faster game overall for everybody. Okay, well, that, this is another uh, Rakdos deck from you, Josh. So this is very exciting. Yeah, I'm in a Rakdos uh, state of mind these days, <laughs> I guess. We'll talk a little bit about that, but before we get into it, we got to talk about our sponsors. Cardkingdom.com slash command zone. That's our affiliate link that you want to use when you're going to do the thing you're going to do anyway which is order magic cards. You know you want all this C20 stuff. The pre-cons are out right now from the Commander product. We've also got a Coria layer of Behemoths if you want a booster box, a bundle, or if you're just going to order singles for all of your decks. All that stuff you're going to get anyway if you just use our affiliate link. Again, cardkingdom.com slash command zone. When you order that stuff, you really are supporting game nights, this podcast, and all of our content. And there's nothing more exciting than brewing new decks, especially when new commanders come out. Uh, this set has a ton of really interesting stuff. And when you're doing so, you're going to want to protect those cards and keep them in pristine condition and play them on the best play mats and put them in the des best deck boxes. That's right, Ultra Pro is the other sponsor of this show. And again, they have all the Ikoria themed stuff, and they are they always create create you know the cards arts the cards arts on the play mats on the sleeve so if you really want to customize your experience and just make it look really cool when you bust out that new deck for the first time as well as make sure your cards don't get dinged up scuffed up because you're gonna be taking them around use ultra pro products josh and i use it on pretty much every single thing that we own even if i'm putting stuff into a binder it's always going into a, a new clip sleeve or an ultra pro sleeve and right in there yep and of course they're like show showcase cards and stuff the oh, godzilla yeah. cards the Ooh, Ghidorah yeah. cards the mothra cards those things are going to be valuable and you want them to stay protected. Again, Ultra Pro will do the best job at protecting your game pieces. Uh, and the final way to support all of our content is directly if you go to patreon.com slash command zone. You get all kinds of cool perks at the various reward tier levels. One of them is you get to hang out with Jimmy and myself on our Discord each and every day. We Ask us anything. Right. Uh, also, you uh, if you qualify, there is free merchandise that you get a few times a year. In fact... Um, this was a little bit delayed, took a little longer than we wanted to, but we've started to ship out all of the uh, merchandise from last year, which was also related to our Kickstarter. So people are getting t-shirts, the cool, really cool coins oh, that we yes. designed. Yeah, getting a lot of pictures on Twitter and things uh, of people receiving that stuff, which is awesome. Um, and of course. Yeah, of course. We also shout out one lucky patron every single episode. And this episode is dedicated to Shannon Pilato. Shannon, you rock. You do rock. All right, so full disclosure, the process that we went through is we've, we've gone through all these set reviews and everything, and Jimmy and I were like, hey, so for the next couple episodes, why don't we each take a commander or a partner pair that we like, and we'll build a deck around it. You know, Jimmy will build one, I'll build one, mm -hmm. and then we'll do a couple of deck tech episodes. And uh, Jimmy's is going to be next week. Actually, Jimmy, you want to tease it? Yeah, it is a budget build, one of the first ever like fully budget builds where I held myself to a really specific constraint for Paco and Haldan. So play fetch. That's uh, pretty exciting. We talked about that again in our set review and how you were excited about that deck. Yeah. That's going to be next week. Um, so this week is is the deck I brewed, which is Obosh the Prey Piercer. This is not a budget deck. Yeah. You you tricked me. You were like, I'm doing budget. And I was like, oh, I should have thought of that, but it's too late. I've already built my deck. It's also very hard. So, yeah. you know, maybe... <laughs> <laughs> maybe we leave that to the professionals like Mitch. Yeah. I mean, big props to Mitch for, for being able to put decks under even a lower amount than I was able to get mine under. So it, it is pretty impressive to see. Yeah, but I'm excited to see your budget build. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, 
So full disclosure here, when we went away, Jimmy was like, I'm going to build Paco and Haldan. And I was like, I'm going to build Tyam. Oh, nice. And then a couple days later, I messaged you and I was like, I'm switching. I'm going to switch to Obosh. <laughs> and the reason for this might surprise some people. But as I was building the Tyam deck, and Tyam, just for those people uh, that may not have memorized what everything does yet, Tyam is that card where... You pay three mana, you take three counters off creatures you control, and then you sun titan something. You get something from your graveyard of three CMC or less back into On play. On the battlefield, yeah. Yeah, and as I was building that deck, it's going to undoubtedly be very strong, but it's going to be one of those decks that's just very... Sp spin its own wheels, dirt oh, yeah. dirtily, for lack of a better word. And that's a play style that I like, obviously. You do. You love your value. And yeah. time is just like, let's fetch stuff out of the graveyard. Let's sacrifice things. Let's get the little engine going and see just how much craziness we can do in one turn. Right. And I was building that deck and putting it all together, but it was very much like, yeah, I'm going to just cycle the same thing in and out of my graveyard every time. And every time <laughs> it's going to create the mana and the counters to do it again. And we're going to get into this loop and I'm going to blood artist people to death or whatever it was. And my eyes just kind of rolled back in my head. And I was just like... <laughs> Bored by the idea of it, maybe because I do have a lot of value decks. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I, I well, let, I want to talk to you about this a little bit because we were having this discussion in the in, this discussion in the office the other day, which is I feel like the commander format has gotten a little bit dirtily in the last couple of years. You know, a bunch of commanders have come out: Corvald, Moldrosa, Tulane, Yarrick. There's a ton that really incentivize you to just spin your own wheels and. You know, a lot of that stuff doesn't seem to be advancing towards a win. It's not like somebody's taking damage out the whole time, or it's going to spin your wheels until you combo out. But the outcome is mostly like the other three players just kind of watch somebody take a 20-minute turn. Yeah, when the cards are designed in a way that's like, hey, here's just all the value tacked onto this. Find a way to abuse that value instead of here's the direction you want to go. How can you abuse that direction? You're going to get that, right? There's yeah, you're right. So many commanders now basically say like draw a card on them or draw a card and create mana on them. Yeah. Which is just like uh, when you have that combination, it's going to just be a lot of like do this create the mana to do the next thing, which draws me the card, which I'm going to then play, which will then create mana and draw me a card to do the next thing. And you're just like watching a person play a bunch of stuff because it was all designed to just keep going. Kind of reminds me of the Prophet of Krufix days where it's just like, and now it's also your turn again after my turn. And it's your turn again after the next person's turn. But Even it's, worse because it's like over and over. <laughs> it's like still your turn and then it's still your turn. And then, oh crap, they hit a card that untaps everything and now yeah. they're going to start it over and keep going. Did they just play Time Warp? I guess they did. Yeah. Here we go again. Yeah, so, and I think this is not, like, a huge thing where, like, you know, the formats may be changed by, like, 10% over over the last couple of years, but it just mm. feels like we're moving more towards that direction, more towards these really long turns. And I think I'm naturally, like, again, I have a lot of value decks, but I'm naturally, I like, Greven I built recently, Feather, right. now this Obosh, which I'm drawn towards, I think... I mean, Vile Smasher, even. A little bit, yeah, which is just, like, I think I'm just drawn towards this, like, hey, I would rather build decks that... I may or may not win. Obviously, I want to build decks that still can win, but one of the goals of the deck is actually to create games where we're moving towards the end of the game constantly, doing damage to everybody, you know, where it's not a just complete dirtle fest of like, <laughs> do a bunch of stuff, but no, nope, nothing really happened. Well, especially if it's four players all dirtling at the same time. I think it's a great balance to have a couple of dirtly decks, a, a focus deck, an aggro one, a Voltron one, right? Like you can mix it up a bit. And we've had this experience with the Kyle Hills and the Craig Blanchettes of the world where it's like, you got to make sure you're on your feet and playing and not just waiting till turn five to do anything. Uh, otherwise, you might find yourself knocked out of the game. Yeah, you have to... Have to yeah, Kyle really made us have to have interaction in our deck. You can't just let decks do their thing and say, I'm going to do my thing and whoever gets there first, because Kyle will always get there first. <laughs> uh, Craig... Because science. Yeah, Craig uh, changed the meta a lot or just set our meta, I guess, since he was there from the beginning of like, you can't do nothing for the first few turns because you'll just die to infect. You have to have blockers, mm -hmm. be able to remove things. Yeah, and I think that... Anyway, that's why I was kind of drawn towards Obosh. And so this deck is really created in an effort to make sure that the games are fast. And you may or may not win, but when at the point that you die, there will have been a lot of damage done to all the players. And hopefully, even if you're dead, you won't have to sit out for long because everybody will be at a low life toll at that point. Yeah, imagine if you were the first player eliminated by the dirtly player, and then you have to wait for five more dirtly player turns because they can't actually finish out the game. Right. It's in the same way that you're like, you know, you have a couple of more competitive decks in your stable. You have a really casual one. Why not have fast ones as well as your value-based engines? Yeah, and not just fast, like my deck's going to do its thing fast, but it's going to incentivize and create a fast right. game for the whole table. All right, so maybe we should start out here, get into the deck tech portion. Uh, I guess we should read Obosh. Do you want to yes, read it? Yes, we should. So Obosh is one of the commanders that 
It can also be a companion, which is an extra card that starts outside your deck. This is not a deck with Obosh's companion. Josh built this as the commander. So good point. Good point. Obosh the Prey Piercer is three in Rakdos. So three black, black, three black, red, or three red, red for a three, five legendary Hellion Horror. We'll ignore the companion, uh, the companion text. It says, if a source you control with an odd converted mana cost would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. So one of my personal favorite effects in Magic, because you get cards like uh, Furnace of Wrath that do similar things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Dictate of the Twin Gods, and you'll find that once these kinds of cards are out and damage just starts to get dealt, the life totals drain. Yeah, yeah. life totals can go down super, super quickly, and... And this deck, you know, it's all written on the card. You're going to want to play mostly odd CMC things that deal, deal damage. damage, right? Because that's going to be doubled. Mm -hmm. And this is a thing we've wanted from Red for a long time and we thought would help it scale into Commander was this idea that like all the cards say deal four damage doesn't scale well into... Four player games. Right. But now all of a sudden they deal the double the damage. Maybe that does scale correctly. Like a Lightning Bolt, one mana for six... For six, six damage, damage yeah. does that feels like it scales a lot better into commander than one mana for three damage. Um, and I like Obosh as the commander because you can still have even CMC things in your deck this right, way. Right, right. And so you can still have the mana rocks and things, and they're not dealing damage anyway, so they weren't going... But it doesn't doesn't preclude you from having them all together because you need that stuff for a good, strong deck, right? Yeah. You can't just not play two drops. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, Okay, let's I mean, you can. You can always make that choice. Right, so we, right. We don't recommend it, though. Yeah, I, I mean, I think if you want the deck to still be able to hang, like, we have a powerful play group, and it's it's all well and good to say, I'm going to build a deck that's going to create for fast games, but it has to be at a certain power level in our group. Otherwise, it will just lose instantly every game, and that won't yeah. be any fun either. It has yeah, to have a yeah, chance yeah. to win, which I think this deck will have a lot of punching power. It might catch some people by surprise. Okay, let's talk about um, the deck itself. The first category, I called it Hit Em All which is you want cards that are really dealing damage to all your opponents at once. Yep. And you want them to be odd CMC for the most part because then it's going to deal double the damage. So the first one is Tunneling Geopede. It's two and a red for a 3-2 Insect, but it has Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, Tunneling Geopede deals one damage to each opponent. Hey, okay. So that's going to be two damage every single time because Tunneling Geopede is a three CMC spell. So imagine you play a land, it deals six damage to the table. That's pretty good value for a land. If they ever print that on the land, it would not make it into legal formats, right? Like, <laughs> right. That's, that's just, a lot. That's a lot. So that's just a good... And, and this deck really just wants to slowly chunk down everybody's life total and then do one big thing to kind of get the last blow in there. Yeah, and I would say it's also very important in Rakdos to always hit your land drops. So even having a card like Telling Geo, Geo is like, hey, make sure you hit your land drops because yep. you, you need to, uh, especially if you're trying to run burn. Okay, next up is Scab Clan Berserker. Man, these cards, by the way, you just don't see them on deck text. Yeah. <laughs> Especially that last one. Uh, one red red for a 2-2 with haste and renown one. So whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, if it isn't renowned, you put up one one counter on it and it becomes renowned. And it says, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, if Scab Clan Berserker is renowned, Scab Clan Berserker deals two damage to that player. Whoa, this is like, it reminds me of Combal, the, uh, yes. cost, like, right? You're just like, I can't do anything because I'm just going to die. And it's four damage for a non-creature spell if it's renowned, and it has haste. So it's not as difficult as it might seem, right? Because all you need is an open player when you play this. On turn two or three, even, depending on, you know. Yeah, probably turn three, but that's fine, right? Because Obosh won't be out yet, but you get it renowned, and then you play Obosh the next turn. And think of, like, Rurik Thar. Oh, <laughs> Rurikthar is six damage. Yeah, this that's would true. be four damage and only three mana. Like it's close to what Rurikthar does, but it's doing it for a lot cheaper cost and a lot earlier. And think of how much of a pain in the butt Rurikthar is out. We both know, right, from that fan episode of Game Nights. I sadly know, yes. Yeah, you you were in a position in that game where you're like, I can't play most of the cards in my hand because I'll die. Yeah, and I resolved potentially the most powerful spell in, in all of magic. In all of magic, <laughs> yeah. And I still couldn't, you know, obviously finish the game out at that point because of that one card. Yeah, so this is a very powerful card. Um, <clears throat> and also, I would say, usually use non-creature spells to remove this kind of card. So it's you're still getting some value on the other end, right? Yeah, if they go swords, they still take four. Yeah. So, it, yeah, pretty great. And you don't want to swords the, the Scab Clan yeah. Berserker. You want to swords Obosh or something. Or Avacyn. Like, you know, you want to get rid of the actual problematic thing, not the thing that's going to be the smaller but actually bigger threat long term. Uh, the next one is a tapper, but it's it's kind of like a Tim, but not the exact same. It's mm -hmm. called Lightning Rig Crew. It's two in a red for a goblin pirate. It's an 05. 
which I think is actually good stats in a deck like this. Um, good blocker. Yeah, exactly. And you can tap it to deal one damage to each opponent, uh. which is two damage to each opponent with Obosh out. And it says whenever you cast a pirate spell, you can untap it. There's not very many pirates in the deck, but there are a couple. Yeah. Um, but as an O5 that sits there, incentivizes people to attack, not you, which means they're dealing damage to each other. And then on the end step, you go boom, hit everybody for two. That's six damage. And then you can untap. And if you have to do it right again, that's that's like 12 damage in one and between one end step and one upkeep. <laughs> two, then four. And then maybe you play a pirate. Yeah, six. Like it's... It can start to add up if you have one of the tunneling geode out and all of a sudden like that's a that can be a lot of damage pretty quickly yeah i like it a lot um and i think this lightning rig crew kind of led me to a couple of other cards which can kind of start the damage dealing early and and because what you want to do is like deal start dealing damage on turn two if you can because they're little chunks and it won't seem like a lot but once people are at 20 all of a sudden, these two and three damage things just start to like really hurt. There's also another side of it where after people are really low, they're obviously going to want to swing out at you. But if they do that, then they're leaving themselves open as well. And then you're still going to get in damage no matter what because a lot of these are pinger type cards. Speaking of pinger type cards, there are there are a few of them that cost only one mana. One's an odd number also. Um, you want to read these next two yeah. are basically the same. Spear, Spewer, and Blister Split Gremlin. Man, you're really going into the goblin gremlin world here. <laughs> Red's a lot of fun, guys. Zero two defender, spear, spear, deals one damage to each player if you tap it. The keyword here is each. Yep. Uh, and then blister split gremlin is also a one CMC card, and you tap one and tap the blister split gremlin to deal one damage to each opponent. And then whenever you cast a non-creature spell, untap blister split gremlin. So that could be going multiple times. Yeah, so one one mana tap it to deal one to each opponent, or spear, spear... Does it is, to each player. Er, yeah, is each player, so it hits yourself. But that's two damage. Mm -hmm. um, one of them doesn't cost mana. One of them untaps when you play uh, non-creature spells. But this is a way for the damage to start to add up. And you can really get into... Yeah, with with uh, Blister Split Gremlin. Blister man. Spit. Oh, whoa. Spit. Oh, it's... Jeez. Oh, it's... Spit oh, is like spit. acid. Oh, uh, it's blisters. It causes Blistering. blisters. <laughs> That's like one damage. That's oh, mildly annoying. It's, ah. <laughs> All right, I'm fine. <laughs> um, but you can easily, I think, get into a, a situation where you're going to like cast two non-creature spells, spells that will also deal damage to the opponent, mm. tap blister split, uh, two or three times and all of a sudden kill you know that could be 12 13 damage to the table at that point yeah that's actually really important and again uh we've said this in the past but when the card says each opponent on it instead of a opponent it's you should pay more attention to it especially in decks like this because it's going to affect a lot more people and do way more damage and and the, the fact that these are one mana cards that tap and deal two damage to each opponent again that's six damage to the table it's just so efficient with its damage that i think it starts to actually work the way red's supposed to work kind of you know yeah well i mean if you have the lightning red crew and the spear spear route each rotation six damage and again like you can do it to the point where it's you're in set before my turn i deal that much damage i untap i can just do it again so it leaves very little time for people to like oh i'm gonna gain some life before you can do it again it's like no these are activated abilities you can kill people sometimes in response to them trying to save themselves uh, another one that's similar but not the exact same is Keterek Parasite. It's one black, again, odd CMC, for a 1-1 one, one horror, but it says whenever an opponent draws a card, if you control a red permanent, you may have Keterek Parasite deal one damage to that player. Wait, that's sweet. Yeah, so it's two <laughs> damage per card they draw. See a value engine. Yep, and listen, people draw a lot of cards in Commander. Yeah, so often this is going to deal a significant amount of damage because they're going to draw two, three. Heuristic study, what do you do? Yeah, this could sneakily be one of the better cards in the deck yeah. just by looking at it. And it's one mana. Yeah. Uh, and again, something that I had to double check as I was building this deck, but it is true. Obash, Obash doesn't care about the color of the card mm. that's dealing the damage, only the CMC. So even if it's a black card or, an, or a colorless card, it's still going to deal double that damage, which is great. That's cool. All right, the next... Um, category i'm calling watch the world burn uh, you're finally on my page yeah man. that's what i'm talking about <laughs> so these are the cards that are going to deal damage to everything including mm -hmm. yourself and i think what you want is just get everybody low and then you'll have you'll use those cards that only hit opponents to kind of finish everybody off yeah that's but smart. at first like you're going down with everybody else and then all of a sudden near the end you go okay now i have a card that only hits opponents, and I'm at six, but everybody's dead. Yep, so this is kind of a Landfall-esque one. It's Zozu the Punisher, one red-red for a 2-2 two -two legendary goblin warrior, and it's whenever a land enters the battlefield, Zozu deals two damage to that land's controller. So Chulane really doesn't like this. Uro does not like this at all. All the green decks, you're punishing them, right? They rampant growth, they right. cultivate, they explosive vegetation. This is four damage per land with Obosh <laughs> out. 
So you can't even expose the vegetation and rampant growth very much, right? Because that's like 12 damage right there, yeah. plus your one land drop per turn. And this comes out early, turn yep. three, right? So it comes out before Awash, then Awash is out. Remember, it will hit yourself, but you're not a deck that's going to be putting extra lands into play. So this is probably going to hurt you less. And either way, even if it's the same as everybody else, that's still fine with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I like Zozu. Yeah, the next one is a really interesting <laughs> one. Again, this this is just going to speed up the game. It's Spell Shock. It's two and a red for an enchantment. Whenever a player casts a spell... It's spell everything in the game except for lands. Yeah, <laughs> Spell Shock deals two damage to that player. Again, four damage with Obosh out. Whenever they cast a spell, yourself included, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, at a certain point, you have your tappers. You don't need to cast anymore. You can just sort of wait for, again, everyone's life total. It's sort of a game where you're watching everyone trying to dip below yours, and then you know you can start going ham because you're going to go reduce. Your life total is going to be reduced at the same rate. And decks that are doing broken things, like casting things over and over, you know, storm sort of this stuff. This is just the whatever. anti value. Yeah, it's right? just like, hey, listen, you want to do all that stuff, but you might be at, you might be dead by the time that's over, or yeah. you might be at eight. In which case, you know, we'll have some answers at that point. Yeah, I like old cards that don't see much play because they're also going to be easier to find for sure, and they're not Cheaper. super high in demand. And in a lot of ways, I guess Red has kind of built its own meta in the past twenty years to beat these kinds of decks just through these types of cards. Sulfuric Vortex, another classic enchantment for one red red at the beginning of each player's upkeep. Sulfuric Vortex deals two damage to that player. And here's the big one. If a player gains life, they gain no life instead. So hosing all of those, it's the Erebos type effect, getting rid of life gain. That's the one thing that I think Obosh is really afraid of. Yeah. A, a Massive big, life gain. Yeah, a big chunk of life gain will really like put people out of reach, especially <laughs> when you're hitting yourself as well. Uh, and again, Sulfuric Vortex, it's going to deal four damage per upkeep, which is a significant amount. Mm -hmm. That's a tenth of their life total. Uh, it won't take very long for that to add up. So I really like this card. All right, here's a really cool one. And one of your game enders... Uh, Again, it will hit yourself, but all you have to do is be above other players or, well, let me read the card. It's acidic mm -hmm. soil, two and a red for a sorcery. Acidic soil deals one damage to each player for each land he or she controls. This is the anti-Josh card right here. Yeah. This just blows up your Uro deck. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of decks are just concentrating on getting a lot of lands into play. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Chulane, Uro, a ton of them are going to have 12 lands when you've got eight. And this is a way to be like, how many lands does everybody have? Remember, it's this This is doubled Oof. with Obosh out. So it could very easily be 24 like... 24 damage for 24 damage, but I take 16. We're at the same life total. I live through it. You don't. Jeez. Yeah, that kind of thing. So this is one of the best cards in the deck and one of your finishers. It's only three mana. So you can potentially later in the game cast obosh and acidic soil in the mm -hmm. same turn as like a finisher type move or like pass in flames get it back right red red's got ways to do it earthquake another one of my favorites is x and a red so the cmc question here is a little different it's a sorcery it deals x damage to each creature without flying and each player that's yep. the big one and now remember you can set on x spells their cmc is what you pay for x their cmc on the stack so what i like about earthquake is for one, you can always make it odd mm -hmm. just by making X an even number. Adding one or less mana or more mana. Right. You want two, four, six, eight because the one red will count towards a CMC, yep. right? Also, if you do X is equal four, that's, oh no, this is not true because Obosh will double the damage as Obosh is out. So that'll be eight. Right. But think if you do X is equal to like seven or eight, that'd be 16 damage to everybody for nine mana. That's like, you, how many people have lost to Exsanguinate in a game? Now, obviously the life gain matters in that scenario but it's the type of thing where if you're ahead mm -hmm. you know you've got these other things that have hit your opponents and you're at 22 and everybody else is below 22 boom earthquake good way to just take the game out right earthquake is also just a good board wipe let's say you don't want to do the yes. double damage from obosh you get the choice of casting it for even cmc and you still might kill everything you need to without you know like let's say if you're at like eight you're like oh she'll cast this for five so it does five damage to everyone not you know four and having it do eight damage to everyone and killing you it's a really good point right and and we know how commander games go obosh is not always gonna be on the battlefield it will get yeah. removed it'll get countered there'll be board wipes whatever and so earthquake being a card that saves you in other situations where it's like yeah i'm not trying to kill everybody with it i'm just trying to board wipe with it yeah totally yeah. Uh, oh, here's a jimmy favorite it's my favorite rampaging frost on take damage two in a red for a three three with menace again very important text on this dinosaur players can't gain life Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, Rampaging Ferostun deals one damage to that creature's controller, or two damage. Token decks. Take two damage. <laughs> Take two damage. That yeah. Would, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> Brutal. And again, it, it it's going to add up over time. It hits both players, but 
you don't mind as much. Also, there's not a really creature heavy deck. It's not like it's running 30 creatures. So yeah. the two lane decks, again, Rampaging Frost on Yara. Any token decks. deck. Yeah. They're just like, uh, because two damage per creature plus every time I play a land, I'm getting to take damage every upkeep. And all of a sudden, uh, I'm at 12. I can't do anything because if I play a land, I die. If I play a creature, I die. If I cast right. a non creature spell, I die. You're trying to get them in the situations where they're in real like trouble. Like shackling them yeah. to not be able to do anything. Wow, you're almost playing a, a stacks deck. I mean, it is, but it's not as annoying as stacks because you can do the stuff. You're just trying to weigh your resources, right? Like, right. it's not like Winter Orb, which is like straight up can't use your mana. <laughs> this is like, yeah, you can, but you got to be willing to pay the life for it. Yep. Uh, this next one is, again, we talked about in the set review, one of the more powerful cards in the deck. You just have to be a little careful when you use it. It's Heartless Hititsugu, three red red for a four three Ogre Shaman, but you tap it and it deals damage to each player equal to half that player's life total rounded down so this insta kills anybody who's at an even life total <laughs> with obosh out yeah yeah with obosh out right because it deals double the damage so if you're 22 deal 11 double that's 22 kills you, you just immediately die yeah but if you're at an odd life total then all of a sudden you'll be at one at the end of it yep because it rounds down so you want to do this when you're at an odd life total but you can control that a little bit better because you can be like, oh, I'm going to play this spell that deals like Earthquake. Oh, I'm going to Earthquake for one. One, yeah. To get myself to the right thing. And then boom, you can do some stuff. So Heartless City 2, it's just very powerful. And, all, you know, listen, this is not something that you're going to do every game or that you should do every game. But some games you might be like, I can't win this game. I'll take a draw. Boom. Yeah. Heartless City 2. Or at least I'll take three people out with me. Or yeah. two people out with me. And I might die myself. But yeah. But that'll be a fast game. <laughs> yeah. The Heartless City 2, every time it lands, it's one of those must remove cards. Uh, I played in my Neheb deck and it is very powerful. So don't get us wrong. <laughs> you know nobody's casting that if they don't have some kind of plan for it to not kill them. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. nobody just puts it out there and doesn't have wound reflection or something in their hand to play next turn. Yep. Let's talk about some of the uh, the more interesting cards in here. This is a nice section called Don't Be Afraid to Get Even. Yeah, I think the trap you could fall into when creating this deck is to sort of in your mind say, I'm only going to put odd CMC stuff in this deck. Right. And there are some even CMC things you're going to want in here, even though it feels bad because they're not going to get double their, uh, they're not going to double their damage through Obosh. Mm -hmm. But I think they're just still good enough and on plan with the deck that you, you do want some even CMC things. The, no, I'm not just counting mana rocks and things. Things that do uh, deal damage and are on plan with the deck. Yes, they're not going to be doubled, but they're still going to be good enough. Uh, the first one is Ankh of Mishra, which is a classic card from uh, from Alpha, I think. Wow. It's two mana for an artifact. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, Ankh of Mishra deals two damage to that land's controller. Okay. This is like Zoju the Punisher. Can't be doubled, but it comes out very early mm -hmm. and will just... You know, if you play this on turn two, people are going to take 10 to 12 damage from this thing through the course of the game or more if they're or one of those more, green yeah. decks. Yeah. Well, let's not forget, Obosh is a five CMC commander. Casting it once is already a, a bit tough. Casting it again for seven mana, it's going to be harder. So you want to have a lot of backup, obviously. And plus, when you do finally get to the point where you can cast Obosh in one spell, you want people at a low enough life, life total that when you cast that spell, it can end the game. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, this next one is like a definite must include, even though it's even CMC. Torbran, Thane of Redfell. A lot of people build decks around this guy too. It's one red, 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 so it's four CMC for a two, four dwarf noble legendary creature. If a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. So this actually has the potential, if a red source is only dealing one damage, to be more than what Obosh can do for it. And also, it it makes the source deal double the damage. So if you've got tunneling geopede out. Oh, right. When you play a land, it would deal three, which is now six from Obosh. Since oh. it, it's not Torbrand adding the damage. Right. The source itself is dealing it. Yeah. So the fact that Torbrand is even CMC doesn't actually matter as much because it's just adding it to the thing. So yeah, yeah acidic soil would just still... Add, it basically adds four damage to to odd CMC things. Right, right. Yeah. The only so, time you would care about Torbren is if he was attacking. Right. And then you wanted to do more than two damage because he's a 2-4. But in this case, he's an enchantment on a creature. Yep, exactly. Um, the next one is Mana Barbs. Three and a red for an enchantment. So it's wow. even CMC, but it says, whenever <laughs> a player taps a land for mana, Mana Barbs deals one damage to that player. So this is just a way, again, to just bring life totals down. And this is going to do it fast, right? Because on turn five, 
most people are tapping five lands for mana. Yeah. So that's five damage. Or what are they going to do? Like not play stuff? Yeah, especially, I mean, imagine if you're a Seaborn Muse deck or yep. a Wilderness Reclamation deck, you just are very sad in the face of mana barbs. Think of this with Torbran, because Torbran still works with the even CMC stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, you tap a land, you take three, three damage. damage. <laughs> that's a like game over in a turn. Like if you have 10 lands, you will take 30 if you tap out. Yeah, <laughs> that's a point where you might be able to play mana barbs and just be like, go. And the you're like... Do you have like a two CMC spell that can remove this? Otherwise, you probably just die, right? Because yeah, for the rest, people are looking at their looking going, their, for the rest of the game. Is I can't do anything. They're like their bane of progress is <laughs> yeah. just the worst card. Like, <laughs> I just why die. Does this cost so much mana. You don't even get to cast it because you tap the land for mana first, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. It's a steep price to pay, and also like if you're around the table and I've played like it's been very often I've seen this where everyone's kind of burned down. No one wants to be the first person to make a move. Yeah, like just don't kill me first. Maybe we can get rid of them with someone else's resources. Yeah, so it's just like draw go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up is Harsh Mentor 1 and a red from Amon Ket 2-2 two, two, Human Cleric probably built more for like the legacies of the world yes right? yes whenever an opponent activates the ability of an artifact creature or land on the battlefield if it isn't a mana ability Harsh Mentor deals 2 damage to that player so your pinger deck yep is just and there's a up. lot of activated abilities out there mm -hmm. and think of like Kinnon Urza those types of things where they're going to activate uh, Golos yeah they're going to activate it a lot and try and go off this could kill them or lands too right yep. like a strip mine if you activate yep. that ability yep. or if Rogue you're passage Rogue passaging yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Maze of Ith <laughs> so this this again is a, a sort of hate bearish card which doesn't say you can't do it just says it's going to tax you some life every time you do again not doubled by Obosh but I still think good enough yeah I mean again it's incidental damage it's going to add up over time uh, the next card is one of the best cards in the deck and this next section i'm calling up the ante so this is a way to sort of up the amount of damage or do some crazy stuff i was like oh man i really hope there's, obosh is an ant yeah there's <laughs> <laughs> he's a hellion horror though uh so it's repercussion it's one red red for an enchantment whenever a creature a creature is dealt damage repercussion deals that much damage to that creature's controller Ooh. again doubled by obosh yeah so whenever a creature takes damage if obosh is out their oh. that creature's controller would take twice the amount of damage that the creature took. Yeah, so a lightning bolt turns into three, da uh, six damage yeah. on the creature into 12 damage on the controller. Yeah, so all of a sudden, a lightning bolt becomes like a, almost a lethal, like it's Whoa. crazy. Earthquake yeah. just is nuts in this case too. Oh yeah, if they've got three creatures and you earthquake, you have to be careful not to kill yourself. Yeah. But, you know, potentially like an X equals four will just kill everyone at that point because it's four to eight to 16, 16 plus the original. And each creature that gets dealt damage is going to double do that on. To, yeah. Okay, you're right. <laughs> repercussion is the best card in the deck. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> um, and then there's a few cards that sort of work really well with repercussion are just good in the deck anyway. Blasphemous Act. Yep. Because it's eight and a red. Uh, so it's, it's eight and a red for a sorcery, but this spell costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. And then it, it deals 13 damage to each creature. Yeah. So it's, even without Obosh, 13 damage times two with repercussion is that's GG. Yeah, exactly. And if Obosh is out, all of a sudden it's times four basically. And yeah, again, you got to be careful not to kill yourself in those circumstances, but it's a nine CMC card going to double again, double with repercussion. Also like earthquake, like we said, this is a card that saves you when Obosh isn't out, mm -hmm. just board wipes and you know, how often is the only like on game nights? I feel like it happens quite often where people are at a point in the game where like I have to top deck a board wipe or I'm going to die. Yeah, those are the only things that can save you in certain circumstances. So having cards like that in the deck that can also sometimes win you the game. Most board wipes can't do that, right? No, definitely not. And yeah. I was going to say red and black. Black obviously has access to a lot of good board wipes, but red is all usually damage based. But in this case, it doesn't actually matter. If if anything, it's a benefit for the deck. Right. Uh, next up is one that we mentioned quite a bit on the show: Chandra's Ignitions, three red red for a sorcery, and this one will not kill you a uh, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each other creature and each opponent so chandra's ignition is not the one doing the damage so the cmc doesn't matter as much as the creature that's doing it that's the source but if you do it on obosh whammo it's gonna do a lot of damage to everyone and again works with repercussion because it's gonna hit their creatures each creature yeah Jeez. So it works in the same way. Token decks really do not do well against this. Yeah. <laughs> Use Earthquake for one. <laughs> yeah, with repercussion. Each of those like, is ridiculous. Uh, and then one more card, which I wanted to talk about because it's one of my favorites and I try and use it when I can, but it has it's it's narrow in how it works. But you can have some massive blowouts that nobody sees coming with cards like this. It's called Arc Bond. Two in a red for an instant. Choose target creature. Whenever that creature is dealt damage this turn, it deals that much damage to each other creature and each player. Jeez. And it's choose target creatures, so you don't have to do it to your own. Again, 
Obosh is out, so you will want to do it on your odd CMC thing if you can. Mm-hmm. But this just has a lot of uses. This is the type of card kind of kind of like Deflecting Palm that can steal games out of nowhere because nobody yeah. ever sees this coming. And there's a lot of like interesting uses. When you have it in your hand, you're often like, oh gosh, I hope somebody attacks there because I'm going to do this and they'll never they'll never see it coming. Well, I mean, imagine you also play a, uh, a Blasphemous Act for like three mana and you and then Arc Bond. <laughs> yep. That's a way to win uh, or at least maybe draw repercussion again works with arc bond because it hits each uh creature yeah so if you only have one creature out you could be in situations where you know they have to block because you've chunked their life down so much you're like i attack with obosh and they're like well i block yeah and you're like okay arc bond my obosh it's gonna take 10 damage from your thing or whatever and it's gonna that's gonna be double 20 damage then with repercussion out maybe it kills or maybe 20 just kills everybody so you know this deck reminds me a lot of your stop hitting yourself deck that you it has a real long time ago it has a little aspects of that and that might be better because the the focus stop hitting yourself deck was not good yeah but there were parts of it that i think worked and just taking those little packages and putting it in yeah them in is good this card is in that deck uh and it's definitely good in this one it's stuffy doll it's a five mana zero one don't 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 just hold on don't hate yeah <laughs> as stuffy doll enters the battlefield choose a player that's gonna die a uh, stuffy doll is indestructible whenever stuffy doll is dealt damage it deals that much damage to the chosen player and then you can tap it to ping itself for one damage and it's five cmc so it taps it pings itself for two with obosh out and then it deals four right because it's not cmc yeah yeah so it's it obviously you choose the player that is you know the most ahead or that mm-hmm. you need to kill the fastest and then also, like, they can't attack you or anything. Or other players can. You can be like, hey, I'm going to play this. Just attack me. I'll block with my stuffy doll. I'll block with my stuffy doll. Yeah, the other player really doesn't have much of a... Ch- like, usually you can politic your way out of situations, but that one's really hard to negotiate out of. It's like, wait, but uh, no one loses anything. It's a zero one. Yep. <laughs> and then it's like, you know, if they swing at you with a 6-6, six, six, it's going to do 12 to the player you chose. Like, it's an insane amount. And then you tap it. Yeah. You know, that's 16 damage. Like, it's it's a... It's a lot of damage. And also, boy, if you have to pat the stuffy doll, you are not a happy player. <laughs> you, If it's pointed at you, sometimes you do have to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuffy uh, doll comes down and just hoses one guy or girl or person. Uh, this ne- this section is called just cool stuff. So this is other stuff in the deck that got synergy with the rest of the deck, but not necessarily it's uh, mm-hmm. each other. In a deck that's just doing a lot of damage that's non-combat damage in chunks that's like not really blockable in any way uh pain magnification is really really good so it's one a black and a red for an enchantment whenever an opponent is dealt three or more damage by a single source that player discards a card there are some cards that will repeatedly do three or more damage yeah. there are many in this deck like if especially with obosh out because obosh yeah. doubles the amount of damage things are doing all of a sudden it's not that hard to be like hey the whole table had to discard four cards that turn yeah and it's only opponent yeah that's true and it's whenever an opponent is so it could be multiple instances of it in the same turn if think you have of like a- zoju the punisher is yeah. out with obosh you play a land you have to discard a card <laughs> You really can't do anything. This is this is red black stacks. I love it. <laughs> um, next up is a what do we call these aftermath aftermath card? cards? Yeah, insult to injury. A two and a red for the sorcery side of insult damage can't be prevented this turn. If a source you control would deal damage to a if a source you control would deal damage this turn, it deals double that damage instead. So obviously, so you get four times with Obosh if you obviously use it. Uh, and your next source is a uh, odd CMC. And then Injury, which is the two in a red sorcery side with Aftermath, so you can cast a spell only from your graveyard, then you exile it, is that Injury deals two damage to target creature and two damage to target player. So not as amazing on the other side, but the insult part definitely stacks up fast. And, of course, just the ability to play a spell that does something good and important and then also can be used out of your graveyard later, mm-hmm. even if that side's not the, the best. But, yeah, Insult is a finisher, right? Yeah. Insult, then Earthquake insult than something else insult Chandra's ignition those are ways to sort of take the game out of nowhere and it uh, turns off their circle of protection red yeah <laughs> insult then acidic soil i mean be careful again in this deck you have to be very careful you don't kill yourself uh, but if you do at least you did a lot on the way out it really is jimmy di- jimmy deck because maybe you don't care if you kill yourself yeah <laughs> It's more about the memories, right? Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I always look for when I'm building a deck is... How to the... make it a Jimmy deck. Yeah. Oh, no. No, sorry. I spoke for you there. My bad. <laughs> what One do you look for? One of the things I look for when I'm building a deck is, are there cool synergies within the deck that open up either card draw or mana ramp that I wouldn't have in my average deck? Because right. this is just a way to... Especially when you're in Rakdos or Boros or something else, you just can't use staple cards 
to get you to that 10 card draw or 10 man ramp that we want a lot of the time, especially card draw. Yeah. And so having your strategy open up a, a category of cards that is card draw if you meet these criteria is really powerful because now all of a sudden, yes, I can meet our rubric of like having enough card draw. And so there's three cards in this deck that I think are cool and and open up card draw in Rakdos that maybe you wouldn't have uh, access to in an average Rakdos deck. The first one is Theater of Horrors. It's one, a red, and a uh, black, so three mana for an enchantment. It says, at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. Then during your turn, if an opponent has lost life this turn, you may play cards exiled with Theater of Horrors. Mm. So it's impulsive draw a little bit, although if you deal damage to your opponent, you'll have access to all the cards you've exiled with yes. Theater of Horrors, not yes. just the one exiled this turn. So you can play it early and be like, I can't deal damage to opponents quite yet, but later when I do, I'll get access to all the cards. Plus, Theater of Horrors has an activated ability of three and a red. Theater of Horrors deals one damage to target opponent or Planeswalker. Again, would be two damage with Obosh out. That's a lot of mana for one damage. You're only going to do that if you really want one of the cards. Yeah, you have to ping them to trigger the second part of Theater of Horrors. But you've got Spear Spewers and Lightning Rig Oh, you're doing damage and, to people. Yeah, exactly. It's not that hard for you to deal damage. So yeah. most of the time, this is just going to naturally be on by what you're already doing. It's just going to give you access to an additional card per turn. Yeah, I, lo- I love the fact that you can play all of them. Usually impulsive draw is until end of turn, then that card gets exiled forever. Right. All right, Risk Factor. Two and red for an instant. Target opponent may have Risk Factor factor deal four damage to them reads eight if that player doesn't you draw three cards and then you can jump start this which means you can discard a card as well as replaying this from your graveyard and then you exile the risk factor so this is like red card draw hey are you going to take four damage if we is out that damage is eight or are you going to let me draw three cards eight, eight damage. damage in this deck where you're taking you know in this economy three damage just for playing a land yeah you know people are just going to be at low life totals risk factor is an instant how high okay eight damage if you're at 20 life do you take the eight i don't think you do right not against this deck you unless you have a plan. 12 because what's you're gonna die to this deck yeah not only that you can't just board wipe and get rid of obosh because when you play a land you're gonna get punished for it when you tap a land an enchantment's gonna hurt you right you right. have to like find really all in ways to completely wipe the board so how like 30 life would you take eight You'd think about it. it would de- I think at that point, it would de- depend on relative board positions, how much... Because, th- yeah, if Mana Barbs is out and something else, maybe you can't yeah. even at 30. So it's definitely like you have to think no. about it. Four is like, I just pay the four life. Yeah. Eight is... That's a quarter of your life total, yeah. almost. And if, yeah, if other things are out, like Torbrand's out, all of a sudden it's just getting nuts and you really can't pay, play it at all. But this is a, a card also that you don't need to play early. Mm-hmm. So you just hold it until you're out of gas. And when you're out of gas, naturally one, and it's target player. So you just got to pick the player that's at the lowest life total because it's not only the Obosh deck trying to deal damage. If somebody else has chipped in six, eight damage towards that player, right? all of a sudden on turn eight, it, I don't think it'll be hard to find a player that's 20 or below. Yeah, also I think players... By the way, it's a fifth year life total. I don't know why I said a quarter. Oh, yeah. It's very easy math. <laughs> um, I don't think players, if they don't know what is coming, like, right, we're saying early aggression, everyone's on turn two swinging at people. Ha ha, I took you down to 35. And they don't realize that that five life might be the biggest difference. And then you just have better choices for risk, tar- risk factor later on too. And you can do it twice. And I always like to only include these uh, cards where your opponents get a choice if you're kind of fine with either choice they take. And I think you yeah. are fine with a card that says three mana deal eight damage to an opponent. Like, it's not the best card in your deck, but you're fine with that. Well, it's also repeatable. So. Yeah, it's pretty efficient. Yeah, and then you go, okay, fine, discard a card, do it again, and it's an instant, <laughs> like we said, you can pay eight more? No. <laughs> eight more and just be dead to someone breathing on me? No, I've, I've been there too often. All right, the next one is uh, along the lines of Theater of Horrors and of Risk Factor. It's called Sin Prodder. It's two and a red for a three-two devil with Menace, but it says, at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library, any opponent may have you put that card into your graveyard. Hmm. If a player does, Sin Prodder deals damage to that player equal to the card's converted mana cost. Oops. Otherwise, you put that card into your hand. So it's a reverse Bob, a reverse uh, Dark Confidence. Where it hurts the opponents for binning it or putting it into your hand. Yeah. Right. So you flip over the top card. Let's say it's three CMC. Jimmy, do you want to take three or do I put it into my hand? But if Obosh is out, Sin Prodder is odd. Take Jimmy, do you six? want to take six or do I draw the card? I don't Gosh. think a card in your opponent's hand is worth six damage to you. Yeah. I now, mean, like, if it's Heartless Hit Atsugu, that's ten because yep. it's five CMCs. But yeah, there's a lot. This this ramps up really quickly. Now, lands are the thing that, like, are zeros and are going to double to zero, so that's not going to be as as bad. But, you know, just this is probably, like, 60% of a card per turn. Mm-hmm. So 
It's also got Menace, so it can also swing in for damage a lot of times. Hit him for six? Yeah. Yeah, that's not nothing. All right. Finally, let's move on to the last category here. Finishing power, power, power. Cards that basically just end the game and help you get across that last little hurdle. Yeah, they just have just single cards that can pack a pretty big punch yeah and hit and do it now lightning skeletal black red red for a 6-1 elemental skeleton with trample and haste whenever it deals combat damage to a player that player discards two cards so that's already brutal and at the beginning of the end step sacrifice lightning skeletal so you just get a six bomb in there sometimes and it's 12 with obosh yeah so this is a just like okay. and trampling that's huge yeah exactly this is an out of nowhere haste trampler comes in if repercussion is out they're probably just dead because they won't be able to block either but you know you just go boom you didn't see this coming hit you for 12 and it's a card that's not the worst to play on turn f- six or seven as just like hey you discard two cards take 12 damage take 12 yeah and that's now huge. you're now it turns on my risk factors it turns on my other cards that need a player to be at low life yeah it turns on my sin prodders and things like that uh and the last one is electro dominance so this is red red and x for an instant Electro Dominance deals X damage to any target, and then you may cast a red card with converted mana cost X or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So again, X spells, as long as you, in this case, Electro Dominance, you want X to be an odd number, Mm -hmm. then it's going to double with Obosh and... It's X or less too, so you can overpay just to get that CMC. So maybe you go Electro Dominance you know jimmy for five which is actually 10 because of obosh then i can play a five cmc spell from my hand say it's a six oil or something boom for free deal instant speed two end step right before you start or like let's say you know someone's about to have their explosive turn and you play the ones that can't tap lands anymore (laughs) and instant speed is so powerful because this allows you to kind of get two turns so they think they're safe i'm at 24 that feels pretty safe right and then you go boom electro dominance Hit you for for seven, or sorry, 14. Mm -hmm. Now you're at 10. Play another spell, five CMC or less. Let's say it's Heartless Hitetsugu. Got that out there in instant speed. Now I untap, boom, kill you. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, That is a way to sort of be very explosive. And that's where risk factor, again, becomes better because of instant speed, right? Hey, Mm -hmm. you're going to take the eight? And it's almost like, yeah, if you do, I'll kill you on your because you're on at, my next yeah, 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 my yeah. end step, and I'm going to untap and do something else. Or you draw three cards, which is exactly what this kind of deck needs to do. Yeah. This is a really interesting deck to play against because you have to ask the question, do you just focus fire them down? Because if you do, they're going to focus fire you down. Right. Right? <laughs> so it's like you're, you're, how much, like the resources you need to beat this kind of deck are creature removal, enchantment removal, artifact removal, right? You need all the removal and you need a lot of it because it's attacking you with the same strategy from a bunch of different ways. So it's interesting. Either you go, I can beat this strategy overall or you have to go hey, everyone we have to team up on them but at the price of our cards and our life because they're not going to go down without a fight yeah and and hopefully it does punish the dirtly decks enough that it makes it tough for them to do what they normally are trying to do mm-hmm. without like getting dangerously low to the point where you could finish them off well let's say like an, an ideal curve by the time you get obosh out everyone's probably taken six seven damage right from your type of deck and they're already maybe they've fetched a couple of times everyone's around the 30 ish area that is pretty doable to just put a lock on the game and say like all right i'm gonna control the terms now yeah now like you're gonna have to really choose what you want to do and you're gonna have limited amount of stuff that you can do in the game now before you die yeah yeah so that is the obosh burn deck burn in quotes i know it's not a traditional burn deck but just damage everywhere yeah um to the listeners what do you think about obosh as a commander are there any cards you think we're either wrong about or that we missed that you would think are auto includes in the deck or would be really good in a deck like this um and make love- sure you check the deck list out too so yeah. you don't repeat stuff there the full deck list will be in the show notes again my deck is not I wasn't trying to do budget, although naturally this deck is a little bit cheaper maybe than some of the decks we talk about on the show. Just yeah, totally. A lot of these cards are not cards. Spear Spewer, you just don't see that in a lot of decks. Yeah, even Earthquake, you don't see in too many <laughs> decks these days. All right, if you want to pick up Obosh or any of the cards we just talked about or any of the cards from the Commander product from this year or any of the cards from Akoria, Layer of Behemoth, or <laughs> M21 going. is actually right around the corner because of the delay, because of the pandemic. Right. Um, we're going to be seeing, I think, preview cards for M21 pr- in the next few weeks, I think. So there's there's a lot of cards that you want to get your hands on cardkingdom.com slash command zone. If you order from that affiliate link, you are supporting this podcast game nights, all of our content. In addition, card kingdom is just the best place to order from. They get you the stuff, the fastest guaranteed. We have people constantly tweeting at us, emailing us, making comments on the videos. That's just like, I got the cards in an insanely fast amount of time. Like some people are like getting the, Hey, your order shipped announcement 
hours after they have made the order. Maybe I once got mine like 10 minutes after. Like yeah. the person got it and went, yeah, put it together and put it in the mail just yeah. like that. We've had people in other countries be like, this is crazy. I, I, I'm i from Australia. I got my cards in right. like, you know, a matter of days instead of weeks. It's, it's and I'm nuts. so used to having it be weeks because I'm in Australia. Yeah. yeah. So Card Kingdom really is the best place to get a hold of all your cards. They, they're they very generous with their grading. Their cards always look great. They have great customer service. If anything happens to go wrong, they will solve it. They'll go above and beyond to solve your problem. Can't speak highly enough about it. And them. they have a great buyback as well if you're looking to switch in cards and get in-store credit. Pretty, pretty handy. Yeah, their buy list is renowned throughout the magic world and sort of the gold standard by which everybody judges. If you listen to finance podcasts and stuff, they always talk about the Card Kingdom buy list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so great way to get cards as well. And a great way to protect your cards and a great way to make your cards look even better now that you've gotten them is through Ultra Pro product. Again, there are more and more sets coming out. There are more and more pieces of art. If you didn't like the play mats from Ikoria, maybe Lair of Behemoths wasn't your thing. There's going to be something else in the world of magic. And Ultra Pro is always on the forefront of making those play mats, those sleeves, those deck boxes, as well as the really cool dice, right? They cover every single thing you need outside of the cards themselves to play in a way that makes you comfortable and makes sure that you're also keeping your area tidy and clean. I think that's going to be something that's really important, to be honest coming up for Magic Fest and stuff is to make sure that when you sit down, you go, this is my play area. This is how I'm going to establish it. This is so I know what uh, what's being touched and all that stuff. And that's going to be actually really important for Magic players. So Ultra Pro, again, these are all machine washable play mats. Super, super sturdy, super handy. I can't recommend them enough. I'm definitely going to put my Obosh deck into a Rakdo sleeves that Ultra Pro Oh, you Pro better. Makes. Yeah. All right. We're back to our normal schedule. We're one podcast a week. That means we can do the end step Hooray. where we talk about something cool outside the world of Magic. Now, Jimmy... I, I watched this show because you recommended it. I did. I was about five or six episodes in, and I was like, you know what? I think Josh would definitely like this show. I think, and Elle would too, I think, yep. if you guys watch it together. So it is Lock and Key, which is on Netflix. It is, how would you describe it? So it's based off of a uh, graphic novel. novel. Yeah, it's um, it's Damon Lindelof, who is one of the Lost guys. I think it's Damon Lindelof, or it's the other one. It's one of the Lost guys. The other one did Watchmen. Either way, these no, guys... No, Lindelof did Watchmen. <laughs> okay, then, then it's the other one. So they're really good at creating like mystery type, yep. uh, in a way, sort of the J.J. Abrams mystery box type thing. But they've gotten much better since Lost, knowing how to complete things and make them into real full-fledged shows. And so make Lock them and, satisfying at the end. Yeah, Lock and Key is about a family that suffers a tragedy and moves across the country to their old, uh, their parent, their dad's old childhood home. And they begin discovering mystical keys that unlock all sorts of crazy things into other dimensions and worlds and sort of give extra powers and stuff and yeah it's a little bit harry potter and this yeah. discovery of magic type thing with these kids that range in age from like you know uh Seven elementary eight, school yeah. all the way up to high school and they start yeah unlocking all these secrets uh see what i did there ah. um, yeah so the, it's a it's sort of a fantasy magic but it has this suspense aspect to it in that of course there's a dark force out there that also wants to get a hold of these magical keys and use them for nefarious you know ends and so they start to discover this world but but they also start to discover the danger of it yeah and i like that a lot about the show which is like when you have kids in a show it's easy you can like because at some points in stranger things i was like no one's dying here right, everyone's right, right. everyone's safe right but this show is shot really well it's really well paced and they they really put a lot of time and care into the cinematography some people die in it some too, people definitely so you die. have to yeah, be yeah, worried yeah. about it yeah i think they do a, they strike a really good balance between like this is a fun show that if you love the novels you'll love but if you also love like the sort of like the kids adventures things you'll love too but it's got real tension in there yeah really enjoyed it and uh right now a lot of us are staying home a lot obviously and having <laughs> shows to watch like after tiger king you're like okay what else <laughs> what it's else key. what else you know so yeah. it's nice to have like a good thing that you can that you can binge you know not to mention the the it's great to, to watch a show because kyle hill plays the dad <laughs> <laughs> <I> thought- <laughs> Hopefully, if you're watching the video podcast, you'll see a picture side by side and know what I'm talking about here. That's pretty funny. I never made that connection. <laughs> the first thing I saw when I saw it, I was like, that looks just like Kyle. <laughs> I thought it, was, it looked like Keanu the first time I saw it, kind of out of the corner of my oh, eye. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got Keanu vibes with Kyle hair. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, Lock and Key. It's available on Netflix. We do recommend it. It is a fun show and a good way to pass the time. Easy to binge, too. Yeah. Um, all right. Big thanks to our editing, graphics, and logistics team, which is Craig Blanchett, Ashlyn Rose, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Alfred Estaca, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, and Sam Waldo. Everybody here working so hard. Uh, if you didn't watch it, Game Nights just came out last week. 
We've got all kinds of content that came out recently. I know a lot of people were like, I haven't even caught up on all the stuff because we had so much come out. That team has really been working their butts off to make sure that everything is out there. Our content keeps flowing. Yeah, binge that in between episodes of Lock and Key. There you you go. might need to take a breath. Some of those episodes are pretty suspenseful. <laughs> and a big thanks, as always, to Jeffrey Palmer, who provides the living card animations that live behind us here on set and on game nights, as well as start and end our show at youtube.com slash the command zone podcast. Where are we today? This is Evolving Wilds, I think, from uh, Aquaria. Oh, they are evolving quite fast here. Lo- yeah. Evolving or just, it just looks like the big island in Hawaii. <laughs> this is Hawaii, the <laughs> card. They did it. Uh, you can find Jeffrey on Twitter at livingcardsmtg. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Peace. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>